Exactly. Lovely to see Wolf's team back in action again. And last time we didn't actually get to see the Shadow Rider Calyrex, but taking a look at the team here, it could very well be making an appearance, able to deal some good damage to something um, like the Kyogre there and deal with the Rillaboom. But Chalky as well has a lot of good options. Having that Dark type with the Incineroar is certainly going to provide a lot of issues for Wolf's team. You know, the Shadow Rider Calyrex doesn't want to take any Dark type moves. The Chalky has opted to put them onto the Incineroar. And furthermore, you know, the Whimsicott, the Rillaboom, and the Zash in particular do not want to come in the way of any of those fire type moves. But Wolf is leading out with the Regieleki. Once again, happy to be here. Paired up with that Rillaboom. And on Chalky's side, it's going to be an electric type in form of the Zapdos, paired up with the Grimmsnarl. Yeah, and it's uh, this very reminiscent of the, the match that we mm -hmm. saw Wolf in yesterday where he was facing down against the Grimmsnarl and he went really hard into that slot with the fake-out support that he had in that game um, against Ben just to make sure that he gets rid of the Grimmsnarl as soon as possible. So it'd be interesting to see if he goes for a similar play, fake-out that slot and then max the, the Reggie Alecki and mm -hmm. go for a big attack into that, setting the terrain up as well for that next turn to potentially go into the Zapdos. Yeah, that's very true. Very indicative to what we saw yesterday. And if I was that Grimmsnarl, I would certainly be wondering if Wolf was going to go for that same strategy. And it, it's certainly something that Wolf wanted to get rid of previously because setting up those screens, particularly if it is a light play variant of that Grimmsnarl, then it's just going to be able to be so disruptive to Wolf's offensive pressure on the field. Wolf is going to be going for the Dynamax. I am delighted to say it is that Reggie Alecki once more bouncing into the action and going to be applying a lot of pressure with its formidable Max Lightnings. And like you said, Lee, if that electric terrain gets set up as well, they will be even more intense in the following turns if Reggie Alecki is still around. However, Chalky is going to Dynamax too. Yeah, and he's gonna, it's going to be the Zapdos here, and it's a really good outlet for him because what he can do now is start setting these airstreams up. He's got a really good target mm -hmm. in that Rillaboom to potentially pick up a knockout here, depending on the item of the Rillaboom, but setting himself up to have that speed advantage going into the next turn, potentially. Probably won't outspeed the Regilecki, depending on how Wolf's trained his, but it gives him the opportunity to then get another airstream off the following turn and then get the support for whatever comes in next to... Exactly, and we do see the fake-out go down into the Grimmsnarl, but the Max Lightning does not follow up into that slot, instead targeting down that Zapdos and doing a huge amount of damage while also critically setting up that electric terrain. Life will recall obviously happening as life um, as the Max Airstream comes out from the Zapdos into the opposing Rillaboom and just removes it from the field. So no more Rillaboom to contend with, and that will certainly give, if Chalky has that Kyogre in the background, give it a little sigh of relief. Yeah, and the Rillaboom going down is huge for the Kyogre in the late game. Of course, if, if Chalky has brought that, which you would assume he has done, um, the, the thing now is that Chalky's going to be able to utilize the Grimmsnarl to at least get some screen support on the field if that is what he's opting for, you know? So he could go for a light screen here or even a Reflect if he's more worried about the Zashin. But the more immediate threat is obviously going to be the Regia Lecky. It's got that electric train support and it's still currently going to be the fastest thing on the field. Well, that's the thing is Ashen can just do significant damage to the Grimmsnarl with something like the Behemoth Blade, but Grimmsnarl is forced in this situation to choose do you want to boost up the defense or the special defense of your team here? Because Grimmsnarl can be KO'd, so maybe it only has the opportunity to set up one, and if you go for the light screen, you're going to be protecting from the Reggie Alecki a little bit going forward, but then at the same time, Ashen is going to be in full force. Zapdos as well on really dwindled HP isn't going to be able to survive a null and max lightning, even if the light screen is in play. Yeah, and that's the problem, I think, here. You're probably forcing into a max guard or kind of letting the Zapdos go down down here. Um, we do see the, the light screen come out. It's going to give a bit of support against the Regilecki, but you've got to remember that that electric terrain is set up now, so it's just boosting it even further. And uh, not opting Ooh. to go for the Zapdos, just going into the Grimmsnarl and removing it even behind that light screen. Yeah, you can see the power of those Max Lightnings. And of course, Zapdos going to fire off a Max Lightning in return. Got the speed boost up from that Max Airstream previously. Not going to be able to pick up the KO against the Zashin, of course, but just do about 50%. Zashin, however, had enough HP remaining to set up that substitute, putting Wolf into a good position going forward. And of course, the light screen, I do understand that play by Chalky because obviously Wolf's other restricted pair there is the Shadow Rider Calyrex, a very big known special attacker. So to have that up could provide Chalky a little bit more support later on in the match. Yeah, and it's... The Zashin coming in for Chalky now is a nice option. Obviously, it's very heavily threatened by this Reggie Alecki. So you've got the light screen support, of course, which does give you a little bit of a kind of buffer here. But again, you saw how much damage it's just done to the Grimmsnarl. And, you know, Grimmsnarl generally quite defensively built anyway. So it's actually got to be careful here to get through this last turn of the, the Dynamax, especially with the Reggie Alecki. But no protects coming out, Lou, and a Max Lightning coming into that slot. Oh! 
and it absolutely destroys the Zashin with a critical hit. This Regieleki is unstoppable at the moment. Manages to pick up that very solid KO. Zapdos goes for another max airstream here. Down into that Zashin, substitute doll, but critically getting up, obviously, the speed and doing a little bit of damage to the substitute, enough to break it through, leaving the Zashin exposed. But that critical hit was magnificent from the Regieleki, just removing that restricted and one that could apply a lot of pressure going forward. Zashin on Wolf's side, going to be able to finish up the Zapdos with a Behemoth Blade. Yeah, and this is really unfortunate for Chalky because it's probably looking like the Kyogre is going to be in the back and against the Regieleki with its terrain on the field. Even with the light screen up, it's not going to be any match for the remaining Pokemon Wolf side of the field. I think if you Chalky, you're probably looking at trying to get another airstream up before this turn so you could airstream yes. and get the speed boost onto Zashin who could then threaten the Regieleki. But without that additional kind of speed control support uh, from the Zapdos, then you're kind of stuck in that position where Zashin is always going to be susceptible to getting attacked from the Regieleki. Yeah, and it's certainly um, unfortunate there for Chalky because if the Zashan had been, you know, KO'd in that turn, it could have gone for the Behemoth Blade into that Regieleki. Behemoth Blade going to the Dynamax Pokemon, obviously doubles in its base power, would have been very, very destructive and likely picked up that KO nice and easy against Regieleki. As powerful as it is, it's not the most defensive of Pokemon, and that could have really given Kyogre a bit of a better positioning here because Chalky would have been able to get rid of the Rillaboom and the Regieleki. But as you can see, Regieleki able to pick up a solid one-hit KO against that Kyogre, meaning Wolf Flick is going to take a very fast and commanding game one. Yeah, um, the critical hit probably quite important there, mm -hmm. I think, because Zashin, like you say, probably would have just kind of held on, um, which would have given uh, Kyogre a little bit more freedom when it actually hit the field. But of course, with the, without any sort of support against the Regieleki, the Kyogre is just kind of a sitting duck in that situation. Exactly. Really unfortunate. Um, so a, a lot of information, I think, from from Chalky's side that how to better approach that that matchup, because I think the the Regieleki is such a threat. You need to kind of approach a way to better deal with it. And it's all about that speed control, I think. The, the methods of speed control that we've seen so far in the Max Airstream, does Grimmsnarl have an option of maybe Scary Face that he could mm -hmm. utilize? Because that would, that would definitely give him a little bit of an advantage if that is an option. But we're yet to see what other options that Grimmsnarl has. I mean, I know you're not sorry to see the Regieleki do so tremendously well, um, but if you're Chalky in this situation, you have to think, how do I stop it from absolutely running through my team? And if you take a look at Chalky's six Pokemon, there is not a ground type amongst them. So there's nothing that can switch in to take, obviously, no damage. So if you're Chalky, you need a way to be able to try and combat against this Regieleki. Possibly, you know, something like the Rillaboom can have the utility with the Grassy Terrain, the Priority Grassy Glide, maybe will be able to deal enough damage to that Regieleki to stop it being such a formidable threat. Um, but it's quite difficult. Wolf again has Pokemon that's going to be able to deal with that Rillaboom in the form of the Incineroar and of course the Zashin as well can deal out a huge amount of damage. I did like the addition of the Zapdos though. I did think going for the Max Airstreams is good to gain that speed control very early on in the match. Just unfortunately Regieleki was so powerful. Yeah and one of the things that's interesting that you mentioned the Rillaboom it's not generally something that you would maybe consider being your max Pokemon but the different options that the Rillaboom can have it could potentially be a really good max option because once you max it, you're obviously, you know, resisting the electro type attacks anyway, and you can throw out huge damaging attacks with that grassy terrain support as well. Um, so that is an option uh, that you could maybe go down if you've got something like high horsepower as well. You've got the access to max quake. You can hit things like Zashu for good damage, the incineral, um, and you've got your own intimidate support as well with with, with Chalkers in, in Incineroar to kind of help neuter those those uh, physical attackers that would be probably a little bit more problematic than the other Pokemon and, and Wolves team. Well, let's see how Chalky's going to be able to adapt going into this game to whether the Kyogre's threats can be eliminated successfully. Regieleki and Incineroar coming out for Wolf here. So Regieleki staying to hang out with us all, but a switch of fake-out user in form of the Incineroar. Chalky sticking with Grimmsnarl and the Zapdos. Yeah, the, uh, the same lead for Chalky here. He must have an idea about how he wants to kind of go into this game and maybe a little bit differently from the first time. He's got to expect the fake out again onto his Grimmsnarl from that Incineroar. Um, we yet to see anything other than light screen, though, on the Grimmsnarl. So, you know, it, there is a possibility Grimmsnarl gets fake out of its own, so you could maybe catch out the Incineroar. The thing doing that is, though, you're still not really getting any value out of the Grimmsnarl by doing that. Um, but we are going to just see a switch straight away from the Zapdos into that Rillaboom. 
Yeah, Rillaboom coming into the fray. Zapdos not wanting to take one of those Big Max Lightnings like it did in game one from the opposing Regieleki. And Rillaboom taking control of this terrain, having the grass terrain available and the fake out in the next turn will, you know, be able to possibly stop the Incineroar from going for anything. And at least it's got onto the field unintimidated as well. Wolf, however, once again, showcasing the fabulous Regieleki with the Dynamax and applying a tremendous amount of pressure onto Chalky here. We don't know if we're going to see that kind of fake out Max Lightning combination to get rid of the Grimmsnarl again. Although Grimmsnarl didn't give Wolf a lot of difficulty in that game one, it certainly is a Pokemon that can be pesky for his team. So I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to eliminate it early on here. Goes into the Grimmsnarl with that fake out. Regieleki goes for the Max Lightning and it is doubling up into that Grimmsnarl. Is going to be enough to remove it from the field. So Wolf does not have to worry about any light screens or reflects going forward in this game too. Yeah, and just like we've seen on, on the stream yesterday, how Wolf effectively deals with this sort of threat in the Grimmsnarl because of the screen support that it offers and he wants to just eliminate that. He did that yesterday going for the fake out, the attack into it, removing it from the field. And the thing is now that the, the grassy terrain is not in effect, you've got also the added bonus of you've got your, your um, electric terrain on the field, mm. which is not ideal if you're facing down against Regieleki. And now we see the Kyogre come into the field, very threatened, obviously, in front of this Regieleki. Last thing, the Kyogre is out on the field now, facing down against Regieleki, and its max form looking so formidable. <laughs> If you're Chalky here, you need to make sure that you are protecting it well. It could be the possibility that it could switch out, bring that Zapdos back in, um, just maybe to kind of have to sacrifice itself, take a big amount of damage to protect that Kyogre, leaving Rillaboom free to maybe try and deal with that Regieleki going forward. Chalky, of course, still does have access to um, their Dynamax move. So depending on the option here, you mentioned a little bit in kind of the gap between games one and game two that Rillaboom could be a Dynamax option here in order to just deal with this Regieleki. Well, it's probably the best option that he's got right in front of him right now because typically don't want to max your Kyogre because it will just go down to whatever the, the Regieleki throws out at it. Um, and and really been really going to give you the best option to get damage onto the Regieleki, which is kind of the main aim for Chalky now, is to get rid of the Regieleki as quickly as possible and kind of free up the other Pokemon that he's got to use in being in the Zapdos and that Kyogre. Well, some hard switches coming out from both of our Pokemon trainers here. Um, Wolf bringing the Zashun onto the field. And I like this position because if you're Wolf, you're going to think, hey, Chalky's going to Dynamax at some point very soon. Let me get my Zashun onto the field. Chalky doesn't have the speed control utility that was available in game one. So Zashun's going to be in a great position to pressure the Dynamax Pokemon with the Behemoth Blade. You can see it's actually going to be the Dynamax Kyogre. Really, really brave in front of this Regieleki that is going for the Max Lining in the Electric Terrain into the Dynamax Kyogre. Oh, gosh. Survives. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Not enough to pick up the one-hit KO. That extra HP really coming in clutch, allowing this Kyogre to fire off a powerful Max Geyser into the Zacian that has switched on and get a one-hit KO. That is the, the play. If you're going to make a play, and, and massive props to Chogi for doing that because, you know, the, the Kyogre got a big threat in front of it. Is that Regieleki? But being able, having that big special defense stat that it has, able to take that and um, not opting to go for the Regieleki because I think what you can do is when you, you think about it, Chalky's got the Rillaboom in the back so you can bring it in and then as long as the grassy terrain's on the field you can grassy glide into it and do a significant chunk of damage. Obviously there is the immediate threat that the um, Regieleki's still pausing on to the, uh, the Kyogre right now but you do have access to Max Guard this turn. You've just got to be wary about your Zapdos being targeted even though Zapdos probably has Hurricane it can go for the Rillaboom but you've got to be aware of that fake out that's pressuring from Wolf's side of the field as well. Oh, 100%. This Rillaboom is pressuring in many ways, shapes and forms. Like you said, you mentioned the fake out going down into that Zapdos. But if you're the Ky Kyogre, the two Pokemon you do not want to see on Wolf's team are the Regieleki and the Rillaboom, and you're facing down against both of them in this situation. So I'm not surprised to see it Scarfering here back into its Pokeball. And an interesting choice to go for the switcher, and I think it is the right call. That Kyogre is not going to be around for long. And if you get your Rillaboom onto the field, you can apply a little bit of pressure while that grassy terrain is in effect. And of course, it can take that grassy glide much better than the Kyogre would have done. Max Lightning comes out again, though, from this Regieleki into the Zapdos, picks up a solid one-hit KO against it, even without the Electric Terrain in force. It's now back, of course, due to that Max Lightning, and Regieleki once again just being the absolute standout hero of this match, taking KOs left, right, and center. Yeah, it's really difficult for Chalky because it just doesn't have the resist to the Electric-type attacks, and with something so fast like Regieleki, um, it's, it's it's hard to position yourself against it. And now that play made sense because you're expecting the, the Max of Lightning to come into the Kyogre slot. Uh, but Wolf expecting either a Max Guard or a Switch there and going after the Zapdos where you feel more comfortable to pick up a knockout. Um, and, and by doing that as well, if the Rillaboom comes in like we've just seen, uh, the grassy terrain is overwritten and now both Rillabooms on the field and we do see the forfeit there and Wolf is going to take the match. Well, huge congratulations to both of our players and also to that Regieleki that I really think was the standout there for Wolf.